Well, hello and welcome to uh, Soup to Nuts episode 3. We're out here on location and I don't think we could have asked for a better day. I've had to wait quite a while for this because we haven't had very, very cloudy skies, but quite a stormy grey morning has kind of given way to um, some lovely cloudage. Before I actually even get to the ND shot, I'm going to take a few shots here. I'm going to do a control shot. I'm going to open up to F2, F5.6. I'm going to crank the ISO up to 1200 because I want to get a couple of control shots really, really, really fast, um, really, really fast shutter speed so I can freeze all this foliage around me just in case wind does start to pick up again and during the long exposure, all this foliage um, starts um, kind of getting all kind of blurred as it's being blown by the wind. So that's what I'm going to do. The first couple of shots are going to be test shots, uh, or sorry, control shots, just to freeze this foliage. Right, I'm in aper aperture priority now at 5.6, ISO is at 1250, that's giving me 3200 shutter speed. That should be more than enough to freeze anything. <laughs> freeze a penguin in the Arctic. Here we go. Right. Looking at the histogram, yeah, I've got some clipping, uh, highlight clipping. That's going to be the sky here on the right. The sun is kind of setting over there. We're at about um, 3.15 in the afternoon. Uh, sun, it's getting dark a lot earlier, which is good. The sun's setting over there, but I am seeing by reviewing the histogram that I'm going to have to be a little bit careful about brights over here on the right of the picture. Uh, and as I say, this whole dynamic range issue, because to the left here, uh, where we're in this uh, inlet, it's getting, it is getting pretty dark, so I'm gonna to have to be careful of the shadows in there. So with that in mind, I'm gonna just gonna take one more. Uh, actually, I'll tell you what, I might bring the ISO down to, let's bring it down to 800 meter. That's gonna give me 2,500 shutter speed, 2,500 to the second shutter speed. Okay, so I've basically got my two control shots. So if need be, uh, if everything starts to become a blurry mess in the, um, Long exposure shot, I may be able to bring, blend some of this um, this foliage in, as I say, uh, to uh, rescue all the, all the blurry mess. Okay, right. Now what I'm going to do is I am now going to go into stay in aperture priority. I'm obviously going to bring my ISO down. I'm going to probably bring it down to yeah. I'm going to bring it down to 100. I could go down to 50 on this D800D, but I'm going to put it at 100. I am now going to set up a a, a five bracket exposure uh, multiple exposures I'm going to go into continuous high and let the camera just bang those off again so I've got a nice uh, range of options in terms of uh, ex different exposures for um, uh, you know dynamic range purposes okay so let's let's bang those five off right so that has bracketed five exposures, two, one on exposure, two, uh, two under exposure, and two over exposure with one stop in between each exposure. So it could well be that if I need to bring back some of the shadows down here in the foreground, I have an exposure that's going to allow me to possibly do that in post-production by blending it in. So that's why you need to, you know, well, that's certainly why I always try and cover my bases even before I get to the ND. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is now put on the circular polarizer because I want to see what is going to happen or, or how, how it's going to look if I put the CPL on and uh, maybe um, cut down some of the glare coming off uh, the surface of this water. Okay, circular polarizer's on. I'm just going to bang off another five um, bracketed exposures, uh, but as I say, with the uh, circular polarizer on. Okay, so I've got those in the bag. That's great. Now what I'm going to do is I am now going to go into mirror up mode. I'm going to start preparing for the long exposure. I'm obviously going to make sure that I am, hey, I'm not bracketing. So I'm just going to take that down to zero. Okay, mirror up. I'm now going to bring up my, shut my aperture down. I think I'm going to go for about F16 at this time of day. I'm going to meter. It's giving me an eighth, of a, an eighth of a second there that I'm going to now look up on my long exposure calculator because I think what I'm going to do in this level of brightness, I'm going to need the ND10 to be able to cut down a good deal of the light. So I'm going to put my ND10 on. I've got eighth of a second, so I'm going to see how much more of an exposure I'm going to need uh, when I do that. Just so that I remember, I'm now going to shut down my rear view finder so that's closed and again you know because you don't want light getting in through this viewfinder when you're doing a long exposure so as I say you've got to have that covered 
Um, yep, and it's also at this junction now, or certainly now what you should do if you are focused, you're good to go before that ND filter goes on. If you are in autofocus mode, take your camera out or you'll take your lens out of autofocus mode uh, into manual mode. And if it doesn't have it on the lens or the barrel of the lens, uh, like this does, then there may be a rocker switch down here or somewhere on your camera that allow you to go into manual focus because as I say, once that ND filter goes on, the camera is ostensibly it's blind and if you press the shutter and it, and it triggers the autofocus, it's just going to whir around and it's not going to be able to lock onto anything. You're going to have to take the ND filter off and, uh, you know, back to square one. Okay, so let's go for it. Right, going into my long exposure calculator, I've got my ND filter up here. I said I had, uh, I have eighth, got one eighth of a second. Okay, so that's telling me that I'm looking at with an ND10 filter on F16 with an exposure of eighth of a second, I'm looking at just around about two minutes for the first exposure. Now this first exposure, as I say, will be kind of just getting me into the zone. But because it's over 30 seconds, I definitely have to go into bulb mode on the camera. So, wake it up. I'm gonna go into manual mode. And I'm gonna go beyond 30 seconds into bulb mode. Right, so now I've got complete control over this, how long this camera stays open. Um, I'm in mirror up. I'm gonna take the first uh, I'm going to press the button once on my thing to raise the mirror up. I'm going to let it settle. Right, with the mirror up, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to now synchronize um, the, set, the opening the shutter. We're starting the timer and starting this long exposure. And light's gone out. I can take my finger off. We're now in bulb mode and we're shooting uh, for about two minutes. So what I did, uh, I synchronized um, opening the shutter with my cable release with Pressing the start of this timer, as I say, we've got a two minute exposure ahead of us. We're just about one minute 30 now, so a bit of time to go. So once we get to around about five seconds, we'll check in again and uh, we'll see what we'll get with the resulting capture. OK, we're just coming up to five, four, three, two, one, and we'll end the exposure. Right, OK, there's our first shot. Well, not bad, I have to say, not bad. Um, got a good uh, tonal range we don't have any highlight clipping got some good exposure down in the foreground here we've got these uh, rocks nicely uh, framing the foreground um, going a little bit dark over here but that's not too bad I think what I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna cut back on the time just to, so again getting in the zone now I think what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use that as my base exposure if I need to go higher uh, two minutes I might go to two minutes 30 but I think what I want to do now is I may want to drop down to one minute 30 just to bring um, the sky down a little bit to, in terms of making it just a little bit darker and maybe bring just a little bit more definition into these clouds Okay, so let's uh, quickly review uh, what we did here. Uh, set up and I took two control shots at a very, very high shutter speed just to um, freeze and capture um, these trees over here on the right, just in case they were being blown around in the uh, wind that would then show up as a big blurry mess in a long exposure. Um, then took we multi I multi bracketed um, uh, five uh, exposures. Uh, let the camera do that in high burst mode, uh, just to say to give me a really good, the really good gamut of uh, of uh, exposure range if I need it for any kind of like HDR purposes. And then I put on the CPL, uh, the circular polarizer, to be able to do that again with the circular polarizer on and see how, what effect that would have in terms of cutting down the glare coming off the surface of the water here and then finally ended up with a, a, doing a, a range of long exposures and it, for all intents and purposes um, bracketing with the exposures as well starting off with two minutes is, which is what the uh, long exposure calculator said uh, I probably would need and then dropping it down to one minute 30 and then by another 30 seconds just to one minute again to give me a good dynamic range even with the long exposure so I've got you know good exposure for the foreground I've got a great hopefully a great exposure for the sky and then what we can do is we can take these all back make a selection um, yeah, when we've got them in the computer and then decide which ones we're going to then take forward for further post-processing um, so let's head back to the studio and get these into the computer <laughs> 